Hi, everybody, and welcome to 10-4. This is the last section of the course. So after this, you've made it. Congratulations. Um, so we're going to talk about multiple regressions. Key concept. This section pre presents methods for analyzing a linear relationship with more than two variables. We focus on these two key elements, finding the multiple regression equation and using the values of the adjusted R squared and the P value as measures of how well the multiple regression equation fits the sample data. This section emphasizes the use and interpretation of results from StatCrunch. So we're gonna talk a lot about the results and what they mean. And when we talk about more than two variables, um, when we were doing simple linear, we had an X and a Y. Now we have a Y and we could have multiple input or X values. And you'll see what that means. So a multiple regression equation expresses a linear relationship between a response variable, which is Y, and two or more predictor variables. Now, they're all called X. Notice it's X sub one, X sub two. That's just to differentiate the different X values. It doesn't mean anything other than that. Don't, uh, don't get too worried about the notation. Um, the general form of a multiple regression equation obtained from sam sample data is this equation. And this is still the intercept. or we could say the y-intercept. And then this is normally our slope and our x value, but here we have a different slope with a different x value. And what this means is we don't know how many different kind of x values we, we are gonna use. So that's why it's m sub k. I might use one, I might use two, I might use five. We don't know, so that's why that m sub k is just a variable that says up to k amount or whatever that amount is. So what are we gonna do when we start to solve multiple regression? So first we click on the stat. I, I should actually do this with you. Hold on one sec. All right, so I found some data and this is from body data, uh, and of course, under files, and then there'll be Excel files, and there's one called body data. So I have age, gender. So here it says gender one is, I can't really read it. One is a male and zero would be female. So everything here that's zero is female. And then everything, if I go down, here, it's male. I have weights, heights, waist, arm circumference, BMI, which is body mass index. Uh, I think something like that. I think it has to do with uh, the, your fat content. So um, let's see what information we can get from this. So here we're gonna do, it says, Click the stat tab at the top of the screen, click on regression and go to go to multilinear, perfect. Our Y value, our output is, uh, let's say our output is BMI. We wanna know a person's body mass index, okay? And let's say we wanna use age, gender, uh, weight, height, and waist. I think that's good. Interactions we're not gonna be using. It's for something else. We're not gonna, I'm not gonna even talk about it. And I believe that's all we need to do and hit compute. And now we have all this information. When, it's, when I selected the Y variable, we entered that, that's the dependent variable. And then we click all the X values and to get more than one, you hold the control key down. I don't know what it would be on a Mac. 
I'm sorry. And then you select all the variables that you want. You click compute. And then we're gonna look at, so here we have our squared and we have our adjusted R squared. For this one, they're very similar. Our p-value for the entire regression is right here. It's very small. So let's see. So gender is not that great of an indicator for us. Age also is not great. And waist size is not great. So let's see what happens if we take those things away. Let's see if what happens is that our p-value changes and our r-squared value changes. So I'm gonna leave my BMI the same and I'm gonna just use, let's use weight, height, waist. And hit compute. And now, our our R squared and our adjusted R squared doesn't seem to have changed much. Our p value is still the similar, and everything looks good except it, waste is not really necessarily contributing that much. It's actually got a a higher p value than we would like. So maybe we want to take that away and see if anything changes. And basically, I'll show you a better method than just kind of random. Um, we want to use the minimum number of variables. That's always the best. And it looks like our R squared is still up there. Our p value is still very good. And all our, all our p values here are very nice. So still, this looks like a very nice, very good indication. And this if I were to want to find the BMI using height and weight, it looks like I could get a very good estimate of uh, what exactly I'm looking for. And this, and it also looks like the data is going to fit this equation very well, which means that I could make some predictions. So that's basically what this is talking about. I would click compute, look at my R squared, my which is here my adjusted R square, which is here, and I'll talk about the difference and the p-value, the intercepts and coefficients of the x variables and the multiple regression equation will also be provided, which is, this is the multiple regression equation. And these are the coefficients. This would be, you know this from before, this would be the constant, and then Maybe this would be our X1. This would be the slope in front of the X1, and this would be the slope in front of the X2. So that would be how it works. And again, we'll go over this in more detail. So next, finding a multiple regression equation, our objective. Use sample data, match data from three or more variables to find a multiple regression equation that is useful for predicting values of the response variable y. Okay, that's, oh, that's gonna have multiple regressions. It has more than two variables. So two variables, we have an x and a y, and we have a simple linear. Our notation, k is the number of predictor variables also called independent variables or x variables. So our predictor variables are our x variables and our, um, our response variable is our y variables, which is the same as our dependent variable. So here we go. N is the sample size. Y hat is a multiple, a multiple regression equation found from sample data and y itself is the multiple regression equation for the population. So y hat is the predicted value of y. It's just, it's an estimate. It's not always precise. Our requirements, for any specific set of x values, the regression equation is associated with a random error often denoted by epsilon. That's just a Greek letter. 
we assume that such errors are normally distributed with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of sigma and that the random errors are independent. So that's basically that. And now we're going to do an example. Um, oh, look at that. Body data. Do I have everything that it wants? Height, waist, weights. Okay, so hold on. I'm going to change everything and I'm going to get the same data and I'm going to just give us this information. All right, so now I have exactly the data that we're looking for. And it says, Data set one, body data, which is what we said earlier when I told you where it's located, it includes height, waist circumference, and weights from a sample of 153 males. So I deleted all the females and now I just have males. And I wanna find the multiple regression equation from which the response variable Y is the weight of a male and the predictor variables are height and waist circumference. So let's see how to do that. I go stat, regression, multilinear. I want, so I, it says the response variable is the weight. So I want my weight to be the response variable. And I want height, I'm holding down the control button, and waist to be my predictor variables, my X variables. And I hit compute and let's see if we get what we're supposed to get. So using stack crunch with the sample data, we obtain these results. So Y hat equals, and this is obviously rounded to no decimal places, negative 149 and then plus 0.679 times the height plus 1.01 times the waist. The obvious advantage, and, and as you can see, there's two ways you can write it. And it's really nice the way they write it here because if you just write X1, X2, it, you may forget what those are. But if you write the actual name of what the variable is you're using, you won't forget. We can see our p-value small. We can see our r-squared and our adjusted r-squared are very similar. And all our p-values here are very nice. We never really worry about the p-value for the intercept. It, it is what it is. So everything looks good. The obvious advantage of the second format, which is this, is that it is easier to keep track of the roles the variables are playing. So that makes sense. And I here I gave you exactly what I have here. And I kind of just showed you what where everything is and what it all what it all is saying. So that there's really nothing more to talk about here. All right. So follow up to equate example number one. If a multiple regression equation fits the sample data well, it can be used for predictions. For example, if we determine that the multiple regression equation in example one is suitable for predictions, we can use the height and waist circumference of a male to predict his weight. But how do we determine whether the multiple regression equation fits the sample data well? There are two very helpful tools and those are the adjusted R squared and the P value. So take note, this is very important. Yeah, let's. So we're always going to be looking for our adjusted R value and our P value. Okay. We're not going to be using these this equation. Um, basically, I put it in here just like always so that you understand where it's coming from. N is the sample size and K is the number of predictor variables. So a lot has to do with how big our, uh, how big our sample size is. And then also we wanna know how many pre predictor variables we're gonna use because that is gonna change our R squared value. So let me read all this and let me read it slowly so we understand 
each and every thing. R squared denotes the multiple coefficient of determination. Remember before we had our coefficient of determination was just R, now we have R squared, which is a measure of how well the multiple regression equation fits the sample data. So R squared tells us how well our, the data we have fits the line that we're gonna make. A perfect fit would be R squared, which equals R squared equals one, which we have seen before. Only we said R equals one, we squared it's still one. And a very good fit results in a value near one. A very poor result would be R squared is close to zero. So the value of R squared equals 0 0.878 in the stat crunch display for example one. So let's go back, we'll just go back to this. And our adjusted is 0 0.8767 or 0.878. Indicates that 87.8%. So this is important. Let me, let me, I'll highlight in something besides yellow. Let's do blue. So if the value of R squared is this, that means that we have that 87.8% of the variation in weights of males can be explained by their heights and weight circumference, waist circumference. That says a lot. That means that almost 90% of variation is from heights and waist circumferences. So this is a very good determinant for how we could estimate someone's weight. However, the multiple coefficient of determin R, uh, determination R squared has a serious flaw. As more variables are included, R squared increases. R squared could remain the same, but it usually increases. The largest R squared is obtained by simply including all of the available variables. So basically they're saying the more stuff you throw in the box, the bigger R squared gets. And so we would think that since the bigger R squared is getting, the better the equation's getting, but that's not necessarily true. That's why we're looking at the adjusted R squared. So let's see. The largest R squared is obtained by simply including all of the available variables, which I just said, but the best multiple, let's look, look at this, the best multiple regression equation does not necessarily use all of the available variables. Because of that flaw, it is better to use the adjusted coefficient of determination. So we're not using R squared, we're using R, the adjusted R squared. And that takes into account the number of variables and the sample size. So it adjusts to uh, let us know really how much better or how much our fit really is. Because again, the more variables you add, the larger the R squared gets, but that doesn't mean it's a better equation. So let's look at the definition. The adjusted coefficient of determination is the multiple coefficient of determination R squared modified to account for the number of variables and the sample size, which is really what we just saw here the number of the sample size and the number of variables. So there's nothing new there. All right, guidelines for finding the best multiple regression equation. Number one, use common sense and practical considerations to include or exclude variables. So for example, in the one we just did, if we also had um, their shoe size, that probably doesn't affect their weight. So it wouldn't be something we would include uh, in the multiple regression equation because it doesn't really make sense to include their, sh or, or their shoe size. I, I don't think that matters. Okay, so that, that's what I mean when I say use common sense, okay? Again, consider the p-value, we, we usually do. Consider equations with high values of adjusted R squared 
and try to include only a few variables. This is very important because the less variables that you can include and still have a good regression equation, the better. And that's what we're gonna see. Instead of including almost every available variable, try to include relatively few predictor variables. Use these guidelines. So basically the less the better, we wanna use all the variables that actually will help us to get a better prediction, but we don't want to use more than what we need. We want to use the least amount of variables that gives us the best information. Okay. Select an equation having a value of adjusted R squared with the following property. If an additional predictor variable is included, the value of adjusted R squared does not increase very much. So if that happens, we don't want to add that predictor. For a particular number of predictor X, vari predictor X variables, select the equation with the largest value of adjusted R squared. In excluding predictor or X variables, that don't have much of an effect on the response variable, it might be helpful to find the linear correlation coefficient R for each pair of variables being considered. If two predictor values have a very high linear correlation coefficient, so if we have two, like let's say for example, we have uh, shoe size and foot length which I, we will talk about shortly, those are gonna be pretty similar. Like you buy a pair of shoes because most of the time because of the length of your foot. Um, maybe we have to take into consideration the width, but you know how much information do we have? We have to think about that as well. So if two predictor values have a very high linear correlation coefficient called multicollinearity, there is no need to include both and we should exclude the variable with the lower value of the adjusted R squared. All right, so we have our second example, and I'm gonna go get that, uh, I'm gonna go get that data. I got our information in, let's look at the question. So data set two foot in height includes the age, foot length, shoe print length, shoe size, and height for each of 40 different subjects. So we have 40 subjects, perfect. Using those sample data, find the regression equation that is best for predicting height. Is the best equation, regression equation, a good equation for predicting height? Okay. Let's see what we have next. So using the response variable of height and the possible predictor variables of age, foot length, shoe print length, and shoe size, there are 15 different possible combinations of predictor variables. And I made this for you so you can count that there's 15. So one variable, if I just have each one separate, I have age, foot length, shoe print length, and shoe size or I can use two variables. I could use age and foot length, age and shoe print size, shoe print length, or age and shoe size, and so on. So I listed them all out here, and if you count, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So these are all the possibilities, okay? Let's do the first one. So if I look at stat, regression, and I'm going to use multiple linear for everything because that way I can easily change it. Um, my Y variable is my um, height because I want to, I'm predicting height, but footprint evidence. So the first one would be age. And if I hit compute, notice there's my adjusted R squared, 0.1772.
and my p-value right here, 0 0.004. This is a very low R squared. And I'm sure if we look at our p-value over here, and it's not terrible, but it's not great. But this, this, oh, I'm sorry, that, that's actually the p-value. Okay, so it's not that one. Um, so we can do foot length. It's telling us it's the best. Um, and I'm not gonna go through each one of these. I, I'll do one with it has two just to show you. I can just go right up here to options, edit. And I want to include foot length and shoe print length. So foot length and shoe print length. And I hit compute. And there's my adjusted R squared 0.7484, which is right here. My P value is less than 0 0.0001. We call it zero. Um, why is it not best? It has a pretty good R adjusted R squared, uh, but we have ones that are better if we're gonna use two variables. So this would be better than this one. Actually, this one is three variables, so it wouldn't be. Okay, so let's read what they say. We're not gonna, we're gonna leave best for last. So shoe print length, we can see that the adjusted R square is pretty low. Um, so again, it's saying we're looking at R squared is less than 0 0.7014 for foot length. So we can eliminate this. Uh, pretend I struck, did a strike through. Now we're going to look at two variables. And this has a higher adjusted R squared. And why is it saying not best? So the adjusted R square value is not very much higher than 0 0.7014 for the single variable of foot length. Shoe print length is probably more of a, an estimate of foot length because foot length is exact, whereas your shoe might be a little bigger than your foot or it might be a lot bigger than your foot, who knows, right? So this is not a very good model. And why would we use age? Adding age in when we already know that it's not really going to help me predict someone's height, even though it gives us a higher adjusted R squared. Remember, we said that the more variables you throw into the mix, the higher the R squared, but not necessarily the better. So there are, there are other cases using fewer variables with adjusted R squared that are not too much smaller. So foot length here is saying it's the best because it has a high adjusted R squared and a low P value, okay? And then it's only one variable that we have to worry about. Now, what's best may be different from what we should use. So let's continue on. And I think I'll open this full screen. So, yeah. So, um, application of regression methods would suggest that the best regression equation uses all four of the predictor variables because the combination yields the highest R squared value of 0 0.7585. However, given the objective of using evidence to estimate the height of a suspect, this is a great example of why critical thinking is so important. Okay, so let's do a little critical thinking before we look at the answer. Now, if, if we're solving a crime and we're looking for evidence, right? Let's actually go back to here. So even if age was a good, was a necessary predictor, what kind, I mean, what kind of evidence would I find in a room that would show me the age of a person? So age would not be even something I would want to consider if I'm trying to solve a crime because I'm looking at evidence and I have no evidence of what age the person is. Foot length. Well, foot length is great if the suspect is not wearing shoes. 
but that's not something that often happens. So even that, even though that was the best equation, um, it might be harder to find that information. So what would be a better one would be shoe print length because they're probably wearing shoes. And I don't really know what their shoe size or care what their shoe size is, but shoe print length is probably one of the best predictors because it is evidence that I will have, okay? So now let's continue and see what they tell me. So we're that's called critical thinking, what we just did. So solution, delete the variables of age because criminals rarely leave evidence identifying their age. Okay, we said that. Delete the variable of shoe size because it's really a rounded form of foot length. And, and sometimes shoe sizes run differently. I'm sure you've bought shoes and sometimes you might wear uh, eight and sometimes you might wear an eight and a half or something like that. So it's not a great predictor. So then we have for the remaining variables of foot length and shoe print length, use only foot length because it's adjusted our squared value of 0 0.7014 is greater than 0 0.6520 for shoe print length. And it is not very much less than the adjusted R squared value for, of 0 0.7484 for both foot length and shoe print length. In this case, it is better to use one predictor variable instead of two because these are really similar and highly correlated. We saw, we heard about that. Although it appears that the use of the single variable of foot length is best, we also note that criminals usually wear shoes. So shoe print lengths are more likely to be found than foot lengths. So that's our critical thinking skills, even though um, the, foot, the actual foot length gives us a better predictor of height, it's much harder to get that kind of evidence, whereas we might find a shoe print. So that's, we've thought it through, we're gonna use shoe print. So interpretation. Blind use of regression methods suggests that when estimating the height of a subject, we should use all of the available data by including all four predictor variables of age, foot length, shoe print length, and shoe size. But other practical considerations suggest it is best to use the single predictor variable of foot length. So the best regression equation appears to be height equals 64.1 plus 4.29 times the foot length. However, given that criminals usually wear shoes, it is best to use the single predictor of shoe print length so the best practical, so this is the best theoretical equation, the best practical regression equation appears to be height equals 80.9 plus 3.22 times the shoe print length. The p-value of zero suggests that the regression equation yields a good model for estimating height. So there is, uh, a very good example of being given a lot of information, but really still just using one piece of that. Right, so I found this one question. I'm only really going to be able to do one question for you that's not in your homework. I hope that this is enough information to help. So use computer software to find the multiple regression equation. Can the equation be used for prediction? An anti-smoking group used data in the table to relate the carbon monoxide, CO, of various brands of cigarettes to their tar and nicotine content. So here we have our table. We're gonna open it in StatCrunch. And um, what is our Y value? My predictor variables are tar and nicotine, and re our, my response variable is carbon monoxide. So I'm going to go to STAT, 
and I'm going to go to regression. And I'm going to go to multilinear. And remember, we're having CO here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to make, I, I kind of started it for you, but I'm going to put our information here in just a spreadsheet. You can just write it on paper. It doesn't matter. I'm going to put the adjusted R square value, our P value, and then our intercepts and our slopes in case we're going to use that one. I already have everything. I don't have to go through it again. And we have either only tar, only nicotine, or we have tar and nicotine. That's really all we all the only possibilities we have. So we're going to go through them one by one. So let's do tar first and hit compute. So my adjusted R squared is right here. And I'm going to put it right here. I'll make them all bigger in a minute. I, I've already done this and it doesn't work very well uh, to do it to do it before. So my p value, my intercept is right here. I'll just grab all of it and then um, I'll paste in and I'll take off some values. So we should, I mean, I don't think we need more than five. So one, two, three, four, five. And my slope is this right here. So let me change the font size. There we go. Now we can see everything. Okay, so there we have everything for tar. Now let's look at the same exact thing for nicotine. So I'm just gonna change this to nicotine, hit compute. Oh, well, this looks a lot better already, right? My adjusted R squared. My P value is same. My intercept is right here. And my slope is right here. And again, I'll make them all the same size. All right, so there we have it. Um, I think I'm gonna right justify this just so it kind of gets away from the rest. Okay, that's good. Now we're gonna do one that has both tar and nicotine. And there is my adjusted R squared. We have our P value which hasn't changed. And then let me put my intercept. My tar. Slope one and my nicotine will be slope two. And if you'd rather, you can write tar and nicotine. Okay, now we know what everything means. When we look at this, we see that our lowest value here with just tar is 0 0.7676. Our p-value is good, but why would I use this when I have nicotine which is still just one variable and it's considerably higher. So this I do not want. Okay, 
So now it's between these two. Now, remember we said that the less amount of variables, the better. And we can see that there's really not that much of a difference between these two. It's about 0 0.007. So that's 0.71% difference. So I would not include a second variable for that small an amount of change in the adjusted R squared. So again, I'm going to strike through this. And I'm going to I'm going to say that our best predicted model would just include nicotine. Okay, so they're not actually allowing me to do that. All right, so we have to use tar and nicotine. Tar and nicotine. Yeah, we have to use tar and nicotine, so we can't cancel this. But if there was a problem where we had to choose, I would choose just nicotine. Okay. This is not one of those problems, but you do have those problems in your homework. So because this one is not one of those problems, I can't strike through this. Well, my intercept is 1.375. So I would say 1.37, 1.37. My tar is negative, which means it has to be this one because this one's positive, and then plus 1.33 nicotine. That's what I'm, this is what I was given. This is what I'm gonna use because my R squared is high. Perfect. That's really the only example I can find that's not in your homework. I'm sorry about that. Um, but if they ask for the best, equation, it would be just nicotine. So I'm glad we still talked through this so we could see uh, the different possibilities. This problem doesn't allow for different possibilities. And if you have any other questions, please let me know. I'm sorry I can't. I, I don't have any other questions to give you that are not in your homework. So thank you for watching.